To put things simply, a movie's villain usually has to die for the film to feel satisfying. However, there is a genre where the typical rules of storytelling are bent, snapped and broken. It's a genre where the villain usually steals the show and draws audiences in by the bucket load. That's right horror. A great horror movie is only as good as its villain, which is why there are so many iconic baddies within the ranks. Sadly, while these villains often grasp all the attention, the vast majority of them still end up six feet under. But there are, of course, exceptions to the rule. So with that being said, I'm Jem from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 more horror movies where the villain survives. Number 10. Pastor Abin Cooper, Red State 2011 Kevin Smith's Red State is an arresting movie that stands out within his repertoire of stoner flicks and goofy movies. One thing that really helps it do so is the horrifying villain, Abin Cooper, played wonderfully by Michael Parks. Cooper is a fanatical pastor with a hatred for anyone who doesn't fit within his world and a willingness to inflict God's justice upon them. As you can tell, he's a hateable bigot who leads a devout cult in horrible practices and prejudice. Those who watch the film want nothing more than to see him get what he deserves. However, he's still alive and well by the time the credits roll, albeit stuck in a jail cell doing time for his crimes. Weirdly, Smith's original desired ending would have seen him cut in half by an angel with a great sword. Not saying that the intended climax would have been better, but it would at least have been nice to see this man die horribly. Number 9. La Tenia, Irreversible 2002 Irreversible is about as devastating as the horror genre can get, thanks to its detestable antagonist, Letania. But the real salt in the wound is that he gets no punishment for his vile actions. Irreversible is a revenge thriller that plays in reverse chronological order. Essentially, it opens up with the act of revenge and then concludes with the motive behind it. The film throws you right in at the deep end as the opening half hour shows someone getting their face caved in by a fire extinguisher as an onlooker watches and smiles. As the flick plays out, you safely assume said fellow with the smashed face was the villainous Latania. However, it's revealed near the end of the film, which technically is the beginning of the story, that he was not and that the man grinning from ear to ear was the target of this revenge quest all along. He got away with everything and even smiled as he watched someone pay for his sins. Now that is blood boiling. Number 8. Doomhead 31 2016 31 is a grisly horror that pits a collection of carnival workers, including Sherry Moon Zombie as Charlie, against a handful of psycho clowns. They're given 12 hours to survive against the killers, who all have enigmatic names like Sick Head, Death Head, and Psycho Head. However, in a shocking turn of events, the protagonists do a solid job of taking these bad guys down, defeating all of them with only two casualties. But then the final killer shows up, the dreaded Doomhead. This monster, played by the ever-terrifying Richard Brake, is far less easy to take down. He finishes off the surviving members and is about ready to kill Charlie before the 12-hour timer runs out, and he then sets her free. Unfortunately for her, the movie isn't over as he hunts her down post-game and they gear up for a final showdown. Charlie does clench her fist, ready to fight back, but if your money is on her to win, you might as well empty your wallet now. Number 7. Joseph, or should I say Bill, in Creep 2014 Creep is an unsettling found footage horror that makes you feel like you're watching a spider catch a fly. The villain, known initially as Joseph, but eventually calling himself Bill, encircles his prey like an expert predator, executing his devilish schemes to near perfection. It is a tough watch, and not one to check out if you like seeing the good guys win. The film follows a videographer, Aaron, hired to document the final moments of a dying man named Joseph. Joseph. However, Joseph's erratic behaviour and general creepiness make it clear that he's hiding some malicious desires. After a slow build, Joseph eventually makes his move, killing Aaron by plunging an axe into his head. He then sets off to perform his murderous dance once again, implying that he's done this to many unfortunate victims. This villain gives a whole new meaning to the word elusive. He goes on to perform even more horrible acts in the sequel, Creep 2, which he also survives. Number 6. Lord Summerisle in The Wicker Man 1973 
For the uninitiated, The Wicker Man is a folk horror that breaks your heart and soul in the climax as the hero of the film, Sergeant Howie, is placed inside the titular construction and burnt to death. Watching and celebrating this ceremony is the dastardly Lord Summerisle, played by the legendary Christopher Lee. The vile villain is the leader of a pagan cult on a remote Scottish island and has a nasty habit of holding human sacrifices. Tragically, his plan to sacrifice the hero and survive the film works out perfectly for him, leading to one of the most shocking endings to any horror movie made ever. Christopher Lee may hold the record for the most on-screen deaths of any actor, but this movie is not one of them. Number 5. The Miner in My Bloody Valentine, 1981 The Miner is one hell of an eye-catching slasher antagonist. He's got a great look, a stellar weapon, and some fantastic kills under his belt. Sadly, he never made it as a big franchise villain, but he did at least make it to the end of the film, which has to count for something. My Bloody Valentine is an 80s bloodbath that sees a small mining town besieged by a terrifying murderer. The victims initially believe the killer to be a man named Harry Warden, who committed atrocities years ago as the original miner. However, it's revealed in the climax that the unsuspecting Axel Palmer has been behind this reign of terror. His story ends as a tunnel collapses, leaving him trapped underneath the rubble. No one can survive in a cave, right? Wrong, because he certainly does. Despite the odds, Axel makes it out by amputating his own arm. He then screams about how he and Harry will kill everyone in the town, leaving the film worse for wear, but alive nonetheless. Number 4. Patrick and Karen in Speak No Evil 2022 If you've ever thought you're bad at picking up on red flags, you should check out Speak No Evil. It won't be a pleasant experience, but it will at least show you that there's someone out there worse at noticing a person's true self than you. This film is a chilling tale with a downtrodden ending that sees evil triumph without breaking a sweat. It follows a couple who go on vacation with their daughter and make friends with a charming yet elusive duo. Patrick and Karen, the the seductive strangers are a disturbed pair who befriend another couple only to psychologically torture him, steal their children and ultimately end their lives. That's exactly what plays out in the film too, as they slowly haunt the leads before stoning him to death in a bleak as hell ending. The most horrifying thing about this couple is you know they're gonna keep doing this for as long as they can and no one can stop him. Number 3. The Firefly Family in House of a Thousand Corpses, 2003 Guess who's back? That's right, it's Rob Zombie, once again proving that he loves his villains more than his heroes. Although this entry goes one step further, as his directorial debut saved not just one villain, but an entire family of them. The infamous House of a Thousand Corpses is a movie that celebrates the macabre in every aspect. One of its most noticeable ways of doing so is through the depiction of the villainous Firefly family. Let's just say you do not want to attend their Thanksgiving dinner, as they've got a thing for murder, mutilation, and more. The movie follows the exploits of this gruesome collective as they haunt and kill the main cast. However, while there are seven members of this clique together, including the devilish clown Captain Spaulding and the squeaky-voiced baby Firefly, none of them bite the bullet. In the end, this evil family succeeds in killing off all their unfortunate victims, with the only potential loss on their side returning in the closing moments. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there, drop us a like, share, and subscribe too. Number 2. The Walter Street Butcher in the Poughkeepsie Tapes 2007 There are many serial killers within the found footage horror genre, but few of them compare to the depravity the Poughkeepsie Tapes monster puts to the screen. The acts he performs in this underground horror are so twisted that you better have a sick bag by your side when you watch him. The Walter Street Butcher, also known as Edward Carver, is a killer with a dramatic flair. He puts his victims through awful acts of torture and includes a level of showmanship to his work, including lavish costumes and acts that make his murder tapes look like Cirque du Soleil. The entire movie has you hoping and praying that he will finally get caught, but that moment just never comes as he completely eludes the police and continues his spree of horror. There is no justice in this film, he's simply too good at what he does. Ultimately, the Poughkeepsie tape spells out the horrifying message that there is pure evil in this world and most people are frankly powerless to stop it. And number 1. Leatherface, The Texas 
Chainsaw Massacre 1974. So this list has avoided franchise villains so far because, to be honest, writers will always find a way to keep him alive retroactively. However, one exceptional slasher baddie who deserves the top spot is the terrifying Leatherface, as not only does he survive the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he rounds it out with one of horror's most iconic visuals. The terrifying image of this man with a human skin mask and a chug and chainsaw is one of horror's most iconic, and his final moments in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre are perhaps his most recognisable. The film ends with Sally Hardesty becoming the final girl by narrowly escaping Leatherface and laughing as she leaves him behind. The big bad then throws a temper tantrum, swinging his live chainsaw around, mourning the loss of his last kill, but he's never caught.